Hey friends, it is Sarah the Itty Bitty Celtic Witch and today I'm here to chat with you about green witchcraft and what it is and different ways that you can practice it. So kind of like a little brief overview of what green witchcraft is. And the reason that I was so prompted to actually make this video is because in my last favorites video, I mentioned connecting with earth magic, connecting with green witch vibes a lot more. And I mentioned it throughout the video and I thought, hey, maybe this is actually a good topic to discuss. So here we go. So what is witchcraft? So, or green witchcraft rather. So straight up, green witchcraft is essentially connecting with the earth, connecting with earth magic, with plant magic, um, connecting with the trees, with the grass, with the plants that surround us. It's about caring for them and nurturing them and being mindful with them, feeling their energy and exchanging energy, grounding. Those are all different sort of elements of green witchcraft. And joining us for our discussion today is my basil plant. And he was my uh, special guest in my favorites video, isn't he lovely? And he smells fantas fantastic too. Oops, I'm getting some lipstick on him. So one of the ways that you can connect with sort of green magic is to grow plants, grow herbs, um, grow flowers in your yard if you have a yard, in your um, in pots if you live in an apartment and a balcony. He lives mostly on the balcony and he just every time I just need a little smell break every time. Um, if you are in an agricultural setting then absolutely connecting with green magic through that way. But for those of us who live in cities, it can take on different forms, right? So that, that sort of leads me into another point. So to be a green witch, you do not have to live in an agricultural or farm setting. You don't need to be surrounded by cows and grass to be a green witch. You can be a green witch in a city just as much as you can in the countryside. Put it this way. Is a tree beside a parking lot any different, any less of a tree than a tree surrounded by a farmland oasis? I don't think so. It's still got the same trunk. It's got green leaves in the summer. It's got colored leaves in the fall. It loses its leaves in the winter. It takes its nourishment from the earth and from the soil. And it is in every single way a tree whether or not it's surrounded by a parking lot and pavement. So there is nature everywhere. You just need to have that sort of passion to look for it and that desire to work with it and embrace that, you know what? Nature isn't always this ideal thing in our heads where there's this green forest and the pro a forest that might not have even existed <laughs> for hundreds of years because of the way that the industrial revolution took place. But essentially, you can, in that little rambly way, my main point is that you can be a witch, a uh, green witch, in the city just as much as you can in the countryside. It's all a matter of seeking out that nature and connecting with it. And another thing is, is that green witchcraft is, it's evolved. It's not although we might connect with the old and ancient lore. I know for basil plants, here we go, another smell break coming, guys. It is, um, no evil goes where basil grows. That is like, that saying has been handed down for ages, right? But the people who first said it probably didn't imagine growing a basil plant in a orange plastic pot that was purchased at the dollar store. They probably didn't even know what a dollar store was. They had a general store or they had no store and they had a market. Like, things evolve and change and that is perfectly fine as does the practice of green magic and green magic and green witchcraft. So then that sort of leads me to another point, connecting with the lore. So yes, it's about working with the plants, working with growing plants, growing herbs, 
but there's also an element of connecting with the lore. Where are you getting this, um, these ideas from? Is it mythology? Is it ancient belief systems? Is it traditions that have been passed down through your own family? Is it through a book? Whatever it is, sort of seek to learn more about the magical and metaphysical properties of different herbs and plants, and also as you work with them, because certain plants, even though perhaps they are rose, connected with love, right? But when you work with different roses, you're going to get different energy. Not all roses are lovey-dovey. There's thorns on roses. They can be very protective and they can create quite a barrier if you're looking at a wall of, just like imagine a wall of roses that and all of those thorns. You don't want to go running through that. That's not exactly a lovey-dovey, happy little romancy experience. That's an ouch because there's thorns. So working with the plants on sort of a one-to-one -one basis and how you grow your plant that is also a different way to connect with them and sort of expand on your understanding and um, increase your connection with the herbal lore so and then you can use that herbal lore and that knowledge and these plants and herbs to create spells um, to create protection spells or love spells or career spells or manifestation spells or whatever sort of spell you need, you can involve herbs and flowers in there to help enhance and add earthy green magic and energy to it. Alrighty, let's see what else we have on my little list here. Ah yes, so like leaving offerings. So you can also connect with the trees, connect with nature by leaving offerings for them. So what does this mean, leaving an offering? So you can leave some sacred herbs around the base of a tree trunk, for instance. Let's, let's just take a tree. Take a tree for an example. So if you have some sacred herbs, and then by sacred herbs, I really do mean like any sort of herb that you have put your intent into. If it's like an offering of gratitude, taking that herb and really visualizing and feeling the energy go into it of all your gratefulness and all your gratitude for the earth and for the tree that will make that herb sacred because you have put your intent into it you don't have to buy herbs from a spiritual store for them to be sacred it is more so a matter of you putting in that energy and you enhancing the magic and sort of connecting and visualizing and focusing that magic in for the purpose. So essentially you can get your herbs from anywhere just so long as you're putting your intent in there. Okay, rambly aside. So offerings, herbs are one way to do that by leaving some herbs that you have blessed around a tree. Another way to do it is to leave um, like a little biscuit or something. Uh, it's important though, if you're going to be leaving food items around, especially in a park or a public area that you make sure that it's been made safely. Like if it's got some flour and some eggs or milk or butter or whatever, it's probably fine because people do walk around there and they do have small little dogs and those little dogs are bound to eat anything on the ground. So you do wanna be mindful about what you're putting out there and that energy and literal substance that you're putting out there you want to make sure that it's edible and will degrade away if it is not and along those lines little squirrels and stuff or birds might peck at it as well but you can do that as an offering so long as you take the effort and make the effort to ensure that it's safe and then there's another little aside here which is actually pretty connected uh, you do want to if you are going in a park one way to connect also and practice the magic is to clean it up. So we all know that people like to toss their pop cans for some reason. They like to toss their pop cans on the ground. I don't understand why you would do that, especially when there's like five garbage cans every block. Like you can walk the extra five feet to throw it out or you can save it for later if you don't have the energy to walk towards that garbage can and you can throw it out or dispose of it or recycle it when you get home. Just a little ranty aside there, but you can help be a part of the solution. And if you see that, then you can help clean it up. In the last place I lived, um, it was a very, 
very windy and the front lawn used to get covered in like plastic and styrofoam from construction materials it's also close to a bus stop so people like to leave like pop cans right on the front lawn which was fantabulous but basically i think one letha my actual celebration of letha was going outside with a garbage bag and some gloves and picking up the garbage to look after mother earth because there was nobody else that was going to do it there wasn't going to be a maintenance worker for ages so me and my husband we went out and we cleaned up because it just it needed to be done and it was a way also to give thanks for the earth at such a such a like a beautiful sabbath letha and the summer solstice so another way to be a green witch especially in the city i think this manifests itself is by tidying up a little bit. Now I'm not saying go ahead into a park and start picking up dangerous items and not wearing gloves. No, no, don't do that. Look after yourself first. And if you do see this and you do want to clean it up, go home, get a garbage bag and be mindful of what you're picking up. We don't want anyone injuring themselves or anything like that. And I think I think the other thing I wanted to get at is that to be a green witch, you don't have to use the label green witch. I find that using the label witch or green witch really helps me connect with the community and to reach people with like-minded ideas and connect with people who are practicing it as well. But that doesn't mean that I go around if somebody asks me what I believe in. I don't necessarily say I'm a green witch. I might say that I work with the earth or I connect with the earth or something like that it's not you don't have to like sort of wear the label witch to be a green witch if that makes any sense if you want to go for it like there's nothing wrong with that that's awesome sauce it's just not something that i feel called to do all of the time i find it is a better tool for connecting with like-minded souls in this community in the instagram community in the social media community because it's just handy to be able to find each other and have a conversation like this and then i wanted to share sort of as my last little bit on green witchcraft and how you connect can connect with it some decks so if you are a tarot or oracle reader there are plenty of decks that you can use there are plenty of decks that you can use to sort of connect with earthy magic. This is the Green Witch Tarot. Very topical, I know. I actually picked this up a week ago, and if you want to see me get goosebumps while I'm unboxing it, please do check out that video. And also if you want to see more cards, but each of these cards contains a plant in it. You can see even here with the King of Wands, we have a little plant in the windowsill. And each of these, the lore of each of these is explained, so it can give you a better idea of herbal lore as well. Another great book for, I should have brought it over, but I don't have it beside me right now, for herbal lore is the Green Wiccan Herbal. You don't have to be Wiccan to use it. I'm not Wiccan, but it is a fantastic book. If you want to actually have a look through it, um, there is a review in the playlist I think that I have on Tarot, Oracle, and Book Reviews. So do check that out. It's great for learning about herbal lore and correspondences and such. This is the Green Witch Tarot Companion, which accompanies the deck. Um, if you want to connect with some sort of Celtic mythology related with herbs and plants and animals, because you know what? Animals are all part of it too. I highly recommend the Celtic Oracle Booking Cards. I do believe I did a review of this ages and ages ago. It's probably in that same playlist I just mentioned. I might just link that in and it goes into the Celtic mythology and Celtic lore behind each of these herbs and they are written in Gaelic if you're wondering why you can't read what they say and I guess I've picked up a little bit of Gaelic along the way too even if I don't um don't speak it very well like verbally but I, I can recognize the words for some things so that's kind of cool too and if you're another sort of on the lines of sort of Celtic lore and green magic is the Celtic tree oracle, a system of divination. And this is based upon the Ogum. And the Celtic tree year is explained in here as well. So if those are things that resonate with you, then you might want to work with this deck. And it goes deeply into the Celtic lore in the guidebook of each of these cards. Let me just grab it and show you. 
So like there is the holy or time. Again, we have the Gaelic sort of traditional meanings and such, and then it gives you a little bit on what it is reversed. So if you're a tarot or oracle reader and you want to sort of involve green magic in your practice, there are plenty of decks. There's plenty of decks I don't have and can't think of the names of. Just do a little search around. There is plenty of material to work with and sort of connect and enhance your path and stuff like that um, if you just take the time to go and have a little looky-see. So those are my thoughts on green witchcraft and what green witchcraft is and how you can practice it. Oh, and just as a further note on um, planting things, you don't have to be like an amazing gardener. Everybody will eventually kill a plant. It happens. Sometimes plants just don't thrive in certain situations. Living in a basement apartment previously, my plants were all in one room, which was the only room which got the best sunlight. So. You know, you, you do the best that you can. It's about your effort and connecting and trying to learn more about the plants and how to care for them rather than being a stellar award-winning gardener. Though if you are, like, congratulations. I know I'm not, but that's amazing. So yes, those are my thoughts on uh, green witchcraft and how to be a green witch. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. If you have any questions, please do share in the little comment section. And if you like this video and you want to see some more, please do subscribe. My face is floating around the screen right now somewhere. Somewhere is floating. <laughs> Until next time, guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day and many blessings. Hello, my friends. It is Sarah, the itty bitty Celtic witch. And today I wanted to do sort of the video chat version of my latest blog post learning green witchcraft where to begin so earlier this year i made a video five signs that you might be a green witch i'll link to it up here in the corner and i had quite a few comments on it throughout the year about how to start out about different ideas around what green witchcraft is and sort of the beginner's idea of where 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 to go what to do when there's so much information out there so I thought I'd make this video just sort of a general beginner look at some key thoughts, key suggestions on where to begin when you're starting out, how to really get in touch with your green magic, get in touch with that green witchcraft energy. So I did write this out as a blog post, so if you see me looking down here, I'm just referring to it, I'm just saying hello, hello little blog post because it's always good to have refreshers for your memory, right? So anyways, that link will also be down below. That is what I was going to say, and then I got totally distracted. So my first tip is going to be perhaps an obvious one, but head outdoors. If you're really interested in green witchcraft, if you're interested in learning about um, green magic, about nature magic, about earth magic, really the best way to start learning is to go outside and be in nature. And now this is going to mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. I live in a city and I sort of discovered my green and magical path while living in a city in different cities that I've lived in. So for me, connecting with nature has very much been about searching for it within the city, among the buildings, dealing with the car noises and the everyday realities of being in a city. Not that they're necessarily a bad thing, but they are realities, right? We are surrounded in cities by a lot of concrete buildings, by a lot of, uh, depending on what city you're living in, a lot of skyscrapers, a lot of sidewalks. So for me, as a city living witch, I have had to very much um, explore natural elements as they occur throughout the city. So this has meant a lot of connecting and relishing in local parks, in the greenery around the building where I live, around the trees that line the streets. Even if I can't get to a park on a regular basis, I do have the rather blessing of walking through a really, really lovely park fairly often but sometimes that's not always a thing. So connecting with the trees 
on the streets noticing what types of trees are planted there. There's a lot of, of magic and learning about the trees that are growing on the sides of the streets, about learning about perhaps the plants that are that are planted uh, in the planters if your city does, does flowers and planters. If you're in the countryside, of course, this is going to take a totally different path for you because you're not perhaps walking down sidewalks every day where there's where there's trees and that's your main connection with uh, nature. Perhaps you're out in a field, perhaps you're connecting um, by visiting a beach. It really depends on your local geography as to what going outside, getting in nature means. But at the same time, finding what that means for you is a really, really great foundation for a green magical practice. And that is also not to say that you have to be out there all of the time because sometimes that just it doesn't make sense whether it's a million degrees outside or it's absolutely freezing and it's just too cold or perhaps it doesn't necessarily fit into your schedule we all have a lot going on right it's not about sort of becoming um, a person who lives outside you don't need to be outside all of the time Going outside for a breath of fresh air can even help reconnect you with spirit, help reconnect you with the earth around you and reimmerse you in what natural magic is. So if you only have five minutes or that's all sort of you feel, feel the need to begin with, then that is absolutely fine and amazing. Just head outside, feel feel the breeze on your face, maybe even while you're walking home or commuting wherever you happen to be. Take that time to just sort of appreciate nature and as you spend more time outside, you'll find out um, within spirit, within your intuition, what being around those plants, around those trees, around the natural world, feeling the wind on your face, what that means to you and what that means to your practice. Because it's going to be something that's in some ways very similar. Um, we all often find peace around nature um, and calm in nature. But for you, there might be some other things coming through and that's totally awesome. So there are definitely individual aspects that your own spirit will uncover and explore as you make time to to engage with the natural world around you. Number two, or my second tip, tend to your plants or, or get a plant. I'm not saying you have to be a green thumb because that was a concern on the other video that you had to be a perfect green thumb to be a green witch. You absolutely do not. It is a learning journey. I have, I have overwatered plants. I have underwatered plants. I have not fertilize them enough. I have had plants get sick. I've tried to save them. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's really a learning journey. So by tending to your plants, I'm not saying that you need to be a perfect gardener or anything by any means. Um, it's more so about making the effort to learn, to discover what the different plants require. My bonsai tree likes a different amount of water than my Norfolk pine tree. All of my outdoor plants, which are out there right now, my tomatoes, they like different things than my sage plant. Some like their soil a little bit more dry, some like their soil a little bit more wet. And it's all about learning and exploring that whole green world and re-immersing yourself in creating that connection because with with such a close access to grocery stores, a lot of our connection can sometimes be muted with nature because we're not out there, um, not out there at least in my life. I mean, it may be different in yours if you live on a farm or you have a vegetable garden of your own, but oftentimes we're not reliant on on the food that we grow as our sole source of food for the winter per se. So making that effort to connect with plants and bring them into your home can really help re-ground you, re-root you to the natural magic that does exist in our earth. I can tell you it has been absolutely amazing growing tomatoes this summer. This is the first time I have ever grown them from seed before and I have one one red tomato, the rest are green right now. 
I've got one red tomato, you can see it on my Instagram, and there's one that's kind of turning red. And it's just been a really amazing process just watching it grow. Even just on that level of nurturing it, of watering it, of knowing when it's too hot and it needs more water or it's been a bit damp and rainy so I don't need to water it. The rain has taken care of that. Just really engaging with that whole learning process of gardening is a really great way to start on your witchcraft journey into green magic. My next tip is to become aware of your pantry. So there are a lot of herbs available in witchy stores and I love, I absolutely love going into witchy stores. They are just simply enchanting. But it's also important to realize that the herbs in your pantry, in your kitchen, they are absolutely as magical as herbs purchased from a magical shop. So I do most of my practice with herbs that I've either wildcrafted, I've gathered outside, herbs, flowers, um, from my own garden. I have a bunch of chives drying right now and also from things in my kitchen like this. This is from David's Tea. If you're, if you're Canadian, you're going to recognize, oh, it's in America too now. That's right. You might recognize this tin. It is, um, it's their herbal tea color of tin because, because I wanted it to match. So, um, this is a tin of peppermint tea. It's just straight peppermint leaves think they're organic as well. And this is one of my favorite healing magic things. It is literally tea, it is peppermint leaves, but that's the thing, it's not just tea, right? Those peppermint leaves, they grew from the earth. They have healing and soothing properties and they're really, really calming. I find that if I'm really stressed or anxious that the thing to do is a cup of peppermint tea hot cup of peppermint tea or iced peppermint tea. Both are simply divine and I love them and I could talk about peppermint tea all day. My main point is to um, familiarize yourself with the ingredients you already have in your pantry, what their metaphysical properties are, what their health properties are. All of those different things can play into weaving together a practice of green witchcraft. And then my final tip, which it might seem a little bit random, but it is. It is that you need to embrace witchcraft and um, green witchery as an ever, ever growing and ever learning journey. I know myself that I will be learning different things about green magic all throughout my life. There is so much material out there to simply learn, whether it's learning about the herbs in your pantry, whether it's learning season by season how to garden or nurturing plants within within your home when it's wintry outside just embracing that whole natural seasonal progression even being aware of the seasons there's always new realizations coming through there's always new energy sort of being unraveled so very much so green witchcraft is an ever learning journey. So don't stress out, stress out if you're just beginning on the path and you're like, oh my goodness, I need to complete A through Z to say that I am a green witch. You're going to be completing A through Z through your whole life and maybe jumping back and forth and going to random letters and spots and as new things really intrigue you and you're inspired by different uh, elements of spirit calling to you. So embrace that it's an ever learning journey. Don't stress out if you don't have all of the green witchcraft books right now. I don't, my library and um, my reading is always, always changing, always learning, always groaning, groaning. I, I don't realize the book's grown, but that makes me think of that Harry Potter monster book that runs across the floor. Can you imagine how cool that would be if we had books that came to life? Maybe not ones that bit us, like the one in Harry Potter. I'm just imagining it going across. But anyways, distraction. It's an ever learning journey. It's an ever growing journey. And so accept that it's okay if you don't know everything right now. You can be simply as greenly witchery, witchy, magical being just as you are today and as you're growing on your journey.